Hello everyone. Hello boys and girls. I'm happy to be back reading some more stories to you. And today the first one we're going to read is Corduroy. And that's by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. There he is on the shelf. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost a button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed, and he crawled up onto the large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled, bang into a tall floor lamp, and over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above, and when he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the covers. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. And he set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? asked the sales lady. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up the four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside, alongside a girl-sized bed, stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way she, you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and she gave him a big hug. The end. That's a very sweet story. So the next one I'm going to read is called The Word Collector, and it's by Peter H. Reynolds. So I'm going to take off the cover because it's easier to turn the pages without it. But I thought it was a pretty cool cover. Okay, The Word Collector. 
Collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps, some people collect coins, others collect rocks, and some collect art. Some collect bugs, some people collect comic books, and others collect baseball cards. And Jerome, what did he collect? Jerome collected words. He collected words he heard. He heard, my trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Certain words always caught his attention. He collected the words he saw. He sees willow tea shop. Certain words just jump right out at him, like willow. He collected words he read. In The Wizard of Oz, he read emerald. Certain words just popped right off the page. Short and sweet words, spark, bloom, drift, dream. Two-syllable treats, treasure, motif, whisper, glimmer. And multi-syllable words that sounded like little songs. Geometry, guacamole, kaleidoscope, wonderful, and symphony. Aromatic, vociferous, effervescent. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. There were words whose sounds, whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Molasses, sounds slow, right? Torrential, heavy rain, Tyrannosaurus rex, smudge, and bellow. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Jerome's collections grew. He began organizing them. Dreamy, science, sad, action, poetic. And one day, while transporting them, Jerome slipped and his words went flying. As he began to pick them up, he noticed his collections had become jumbled. Big words next to little words, sad words next to dreamy words. Jerome began stringing words together. Whisper, symphony, electric, peace, savor, dreams, cascading, stairs. He, words he couldn't, had not imagined being side by side. He used his words to write poems. He used his poems to make songs. They moved. They delighted. Some of the simplest words were most powerful, such as, I understand, I'm sorry, thank you, or you matter. Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. The more words he knew, the more he clearly could share with the world what he was thinking, what he was feeling, and what he was dreaming. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. He smiled as he emptied his collection of words into the wind. He saw children in the valley below, scurrying about, collecting words from the breeze. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. The end, it says, reach for your own words, tell the world who you are and how you will make it better. The end. Well, words are important and we use them every day when we're talking with our friends and families and when we're just listening to stories. Um, so thank you for being here again today and I'll see you next time.